I think there are two particular ways that my book on Union with Christ can contribute to scholarship and really change the discussion in classrooms and in um, theological environments. The first is expanding our vision of what is at stake when we come across biblical and theological language related to union with Christ. Now certainly in, in recent decades there has been a revival of polemical disputes about justification, both among New Testament scholars, among theologians, among historians, and that's an important dispute. That was a dispute taking place in the Reformation as well. But what people do not realize is that that is one small piece of a much bigger picture of what was happening in the Reformation retrieval of this deep and wide theme in Scripture itself. And so there were many insights related to the Christian life, prayer, the sacraments, all sorts of different areas of doctrine, not just of polemical um, clarification of things like justification, but working out the implications of the reality that in union with Christ we receive both justification and the new life of by the Spirit and sanctification. So one of the contributions is expanding our vision and in light of that it will even correct I think some misunderstandings about um, some of our disputes related to justification as, as well. But the other important conversation changer here is that there are certain ways in which modernity has shaped our vision and has given us certain polarities that seem incompatible, which a Reformation theology of union with Christ is able to overcome. And so when we read with a theology of retrieval and then we encounter scripture again with new eyes, we are able to overcome things which seem like either ors. So one of these issues that I explore in the book is the idea that in salvation we have union with God through Christ, union with God in Christ, and the idea that God is utterly mysterious and incomprehensible. In recent theology, you can list the authors on one side and the, or the other. Many who emphasize the incomprehensibility of God and the mystery of God, but um, do not have a very rich theology of communion with God in Christ, or even a, a kind of differentiated union with God. On the other hand, there are others who have a um, theology of union with God and communion with God, which often tend up diminishing the transcendence of God and the mystery of God. But one of the things I explore in the book is the way in which second and third generation reformers such as Calvin and Junius are able to develop a formulation that holds these two together. So precisely in the same moment, um, God is utterly mysterious and God is the only one who truly knows God. Yet, on the other hand, God, out of great love for us, has stooped over and has accommodated to our capacities in Christ. It's a specifically in Christ reality. And so that we can have a knowledge of God that is true to our human capacities. All of this takes place in Christ and is worked out in terms of a theology in union with Christ. And so there are all sorts of ways in which a retrieval of this can help us to give a richer exegesis of the biblical text and can overcome the polarities which we face in modernity.